Boy, if you're like most people, you reach for a sugar substitute because you've been told it's good for you, right? And that it should save you from the evils of sugar. And that it would even help you trim off those extra pounds. But I don't think that's so. According to the Douglas Report, aspartame is one of the most dangerous substances ever added to food. Not only has aspartame been proven to make you fatter, it's been proven to cause some pretty serious diseases, not the least of which are cancer and neurological diseases as well. Well, up next, Dr. Betty Martini joins us as we talk about aspartame, diabetes, and other side effects. Next, on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. I'm George Norrie. Dr. Betty Martini spent 22 years in the medical field, founder of the Missouri Possible International, an organization that educates the public on the dangers of aspartame. Dr. Martini works with world experts in his operations in most states and over 30 countries. It's Mission Possible International. Here she is back on Coast to Coast. Hey, Betty, how are you? Oh, I'm just great, George. I'm so glad to be back with you. And there is so much news on aspartame. This stuff is unbelievable. Now, what's the latest about it in diabetes? Well, there's an article out that says diabetes may affect as many as one in three Americans by 2050. Well, hmm, I'm surprised that it says by 2050 because you got half the country and lots of the world using this stuff. And you know, Dr. H.J. Roberts is a diabetic specialist that wrote the medical text. And he's always said that aspartame can precipitate diabetes. But not only that, it simulates and aggravates diabetic retinopathy and neuropathy. It destroys the optic nerve. It causes diabetics to go into convulsions. It interacts with insulin. And the free methyl alcohol causes diabetics to lose their limbs. So a lot of times they'll say, well, they're diabetics. They're going blind. But you got this free methyl alcohol that's converting to formaldehyde and formic acid in the retina of the eye. And it causes optic neuritis, macular degeneration, and total blindness. Um, One of the reasons we work so hard to warn people is that Dr. Morgan Rayford, who owned the Atlanta Eye Hospital here in Atlanta, and he was an ophthalmologist, but he was the specialist in methanol toxicity, and I inherited his records. And he says, if you know, you warn people in time and um, it's uh, vision uh still in the wet stage you can get your vision back and we've gotten hmm. so many people who were legally blind gotten their vision back because we were able to get them in time so when diabetics are using aspartame you know the doctors have no idea they're using free methyl alcohol and they're not going blind from diabetes they're going blind from aspartame and so it's um uh, it, it has caused this diabetic uh, epidemic, and uh, the doctors agree. And in, in 2004, the uh, somebody filed racketeering charges against the American Diabetes Association because, you know, these professional organizations... Well, they endorse aspartame, don't right. they? Yeah. They take money from the industry, and uh, they... Uh, They push it on them, and even though they got out of it, they turned right around and, you know, continued to do that. Many times we walk with diabetics uh, at these walkathons, and they're wearing equal shirts, and it's very interesting. I know one time they called the police. They saw us come in with long stem yellow roses, and it was because somebody had died from aspartame, and the press got them along with... uh, sympathy cards and black lace, you know, getting the idea out. And finally, (laughs) the police said, well, they're just trying to warn these diabetics. This is public land. Let them do it. And so by the time that it was over and we'd given out all this material, we started getting calls back from diabetics, you know, that their problems had completely disappeared and uh, their blood sugar was normal. And just to see what it's causing. In fact, One of the cases that I remember the most is in my own family when someone came to Atlanta on the way to Florida and said, I've just stopped in a minute. William Reed's dying. He's not expected to live out today. And I said, well, wait a minute. Why is he dying? Well, 
He's having six or eight seizures a day. Oh, and my gosh. All kinds of problems. I said, what is the diabetic using lots of aspartame, going blind, MS symptoms? She said, well, yes. I said, well, call him and tell him he doesn't have to die. And it was almost kind of humorous because she gets on the phone and she said, William, Betty says you don't have to die after all. But as it turned out, she came back about three days later and she stood in the door and she says, you know, the seizure stopped. And if I hadn't stopped in Atlanta, she says he'd be dead. And I said, yes, and they're dying all over the world. Well, this is an interesting case because my husband once lived in Michigan and uh, he went back a few weeks ago and he went to see William Reed. This is 15 years later. And he's just fine, and he's driving again, and his vision that incredible? has returned. That is incredible. So yes. why hasn't there been, at least I don't know of, a, a class action suit against the manufacturers of this stuff? Well, the attorneys tell me this. It's like a third world war. He says that you have to have the millions of dollars of tobacco attorneys. And there was, a, a you know, this courageous attorney uh, in Oklahoma, that took six, six cases, and as soon as that happened, uh, you know, they sent in their big guns. He says, I have to dismiss them because if I don't, they can never be set back up if they dismiss them. And they're powerful, and, it, you know, they always manage to get something done because in 1986, uh, the Community Nutrition Institute and James Turner attorney uh, petitioned the FDA to ban aspartame because so many people were having the seizures and going blind. And they took this all the way to the Supreme Court. And this was way before my time, so I said, well, you know, what happened? And the person that was around said it was a corrupt judge. They just get to everybody. That is unbelievable. And, um, you know, just to show you... I mean, this is almost borders on the twilight zone, but Dr. Uh, Monte, who was in Arizona, tried to get a hearing because, you know, it breaks down at 86 degrees, and you know how hot it gets in Arizona. And you have formaldehyde cocktails sitting outside 7-Elevens, and first, you know, they turned it down, and the lobbyists came, and he finally got a hearing. They actually took a bill on toxic waste. That had already passed and took the guts of the bill out and wrote up something to prevent the regulation of artificial sweeteners and squelch the uh, hearing from ever happening. As, as bad as sugar is, and I don't use it, aspartame is worse, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because you may think, well, I'll just go to take something else. You know, we won't use aspartame. And incidentally, people need to know they changed the name to amino sweet. It has other names. That's a good point, Betty, because now when they start reading ingredients, they may not see aspartame. They'll see that, right? Right. And they had it in artificial and natural flavors. And you got equal, uh, NutraSweet, Spoonful, E951, Candorel, Benevia. But let's just say you go to Splenda. That's another very poisonous product that's uh, basically chlorine if you like to drink bleach. But there is a particular warning to diabetics because researchers found that diabetic patients using sucralose showed a statistically significant increase in glycosylated hemoglobin, which is a marker that's used to assess glycemic control in diabetic patients. And according to the FDA, increases in this imply a lessening of control of diabetes. So, and then a sulfine potassium, there you've got another one. That caused cancer and leukemia in original studies. And if you keep on going around with all these products that they put out, you know, they are, uh, they've got additives in it and chemicals. They've got Truvia now, but they put erythritol in it, and we're getting all these complaints. Well, I know you're a proponent of uh, chicory, right, instead of sugar. Right, and this is, I was just going to bring that up, thank God for just like sugar because, you know, Dr. Blaylock, the neurosurgeon, insisted that we analyze it, and it's food. There is absolutely no chemicals in it. Chicory has been used for 70 years to improve the health of uh, diabetics. It's, a, it's an herb, right? Right. And then you've got uh, orange peel and you've got uh, calcium and uh, vitamin C from organic oranges, and there is nothing else in it. 
And now they're making gum because, you know, that's the worst aspartame product because it works like nitroglycerin under the tongue, goes through saliva straight to the brain, and they're putting aspartame in all the gums. So now uh, the Just Like Sugar people are making gum. They called me the other day, and uh, they've been making cookies and vegan cookies and and, um, gluten-free cookies, and they taste incredible. Why, I, why isn't everyone off this stuff, Betty? Well, why don't they just stop taking aspartame? Well, the reason is, uh, like one lady said, she says that she had taken cocaine in high school, but that aspartame was more addictive. You have to remember that the free methyl alcohol is classified as narcotic. Is it? Is it addictive, do you think? Oh, yes. It causes, uh, Dr. Uh, Roberts explains it very well. He says it causes chronic methanol poisoning. Jeez. And this affects the dopamine system of the brain and causes the addiction. Okay, well, now, when you talk about addiction, though, it's it's not like people say, i got to have my aspartame. They, they they say, I want my diet soda or whatever, don't they? Uh, they they are highly, highly addicted, in fact, one day. But, I mean, they don't know what they're addicted to. They don't know they're addicted no, to uh, aspartame. Many ta- you're right. Many times they will think that they're... Oh, it must be the caffeine. They have no idea. And that's because of all this propaganda from the manufacturer. We got a little bit of methanol in there. And, uh, oh, there's more methanol in oranges. And what they do is they, they don't tell you that, you know, that in oranges that it's bound to pectin, takes it out of your body, and that it's got ethanol in there, which is the antidote for methanol toxicity. They just they tell you all these things. And like a scientist told me in the U.K., he says they talk about a small amount of methanol. Then he says, but in molecular chemistry, you got uh, one molecule of aspartic acid to one molecule of methanol to one molecule of phenylalanine, and we laugh at them. Well, Betty, when we come back in just a moment, I want you to tell us the story of how aspartame was discovered. It's a, it's an unbelievable story. And we'll take phone calls with you, and per- perhaps you might want to share your story with us, folks. If you uh, drink some of this, what it did to you. We'll be back in a moment on Coast to Coast AM. Well, next hour, Michael Drosnan joins us as we talk about Bible Code 3, Saving the World, incredible stuff coming up on Coast to Coast AM. And when we come right back, we'll take your phone calls with Dr. Betty Martini as we talk about the dangers of aspartame. That's all next on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back. We're with Dr. Betty Martini. Betty, what about stevia? you recommend that? Uh, Yes, stevia is okay if it's the green leaf stevia and they haven't put chemicals in it because it's just like Truvia and and Pruvia. Uh, When you mix a bunch of chemicals with it in Brazil, they add aspartame to stevia. So you've got to be careful and make sure that it's pure green stevia, but that's okay. And incidentally, George, you know, there is some world breaking news I want to quickly tell you about because I think that the people would want to listen and that is that if you remember the Ramazzini studies, there were two of them. One showed aspartame to be a multipotential carcinogen, and one showed how that uh, if a pregnant woman, if the baby survived, that because it causes birth defects, that, you know, the person could, could grow up to have cancer. And now they have done another one, and this is incredible because it shows that aspartame causes liver and lung cancer. But the reason why this is so important is that the FDA knew about it back in 1975. Marion Burris at the Washington Post had written an article. Uh, Searle agreed not to put it on the market at the time because they had liver polyps and liver damage, and James Turner has said, and what about liver cancer? And the interesting thing about it is, you know, these studies are peer-reviewed by seven world experts. Mm -hmm. You think of everybody drinking uh, you know, diet, drinks, and whatnot with this cancer-causing product in it, and it's 